What's going on guys? This is Michael from GPRisers.com and today we are going to take a closer look at our Gigabyte RTX 3090. And by closer look, I wanted to take this card off of our 3090 rig and that's because we were getting around, I want to say 105 to 110 mega hash. Now on minor stat, it does not show the memory junction temperatures. However, it will give a warning if those temperatures get too high. Now I was not receiving the warning on this card, so I was kind of trying to figure out why I was not getting the you know usual 120 mega hash. Now, after messing around with this card for a little bit, um, I think that the problem is, is that this card requires a little bit more power than I have the power limit set to. Now, the power limit is set to 300 on my RTX uh, 3090 rigs. Now, it seems like with this card, if the power is under 300 watts, it will limit itself to under 110. So that said, in minor stat, uh, the fix for this really is to change the power limits for each card and for this specific card, make it so that the power limit's 320 rather than 300. That said, with increasing the power limit, the heat will be increased as well. So as you can see here on the test bench, we are getting 98 um, Celsius on the memory, and that is a little bit higher than I'd like it to be, um, especially since this is in an isolated environment on a test bench in a separate room. So when this card is sitting next to five other 3090s, in the mining bunker, that memory junction temperature is likely to jump another 6 to 8 C, which will bring it right around the memory junction throttling limits. So what I'm going to do in today's video is I'm going to replace the pads. Um, I'm not going to do it on camera. I do have another video of replacing pads on camera. If you guys are interested in, in pad replacement videos, I can do those. However, I feel like uh, there are already a lot of good um, you know guides on YouTube for that. I don't want to make repetitive content. So for this video, it's just going to be a before and an after. So that said, we are getting 98 Celsius on the junction temperature. I am going to go ahead and repad now and we'll be right back. All right, guys, we are back. Um, I just repadded this card. It was a very interesting um, layout, a lot, a lot different than, you know, some of the other cards that I've done. You know, the two eight pins kind of have an adapter that connect to the board. Um, if you look up this uh, card, you'll see what I'm talking about. And also on the back plate, one thing I do want to mention is that they have a three millimeter pad that's fairly large. Um, it's not on, um, you know, any memory chips or anything like that. I'm not really sure why it's there. I do think it's just so that there is better transfer from heat from the board to the back plate. But oddly enough, um, on the actual chips, they were two millimeter. Now, I know the chips um, raise up a little bit, but definitely not a whole millimeter of a difference. Maybe a, you know, a 2.5 uh, millimeter pad would have been a better idea on, you know, Gigabyte's behalf. But even at 2.5, I don't think it's enough. Um, so I do think that it's it's very you know, possible that the memory chips on the back weren't, you know, having proper contact with the plate. And that seems to be a problem that's direct from the factory. So with our uh, 20 watt dissipation pads, uh, they are a little more malleable than the stock pads that come on it and some of the other branded pads. So what I did on this specific card was I used three millimeter um, across all the memory chips as well on the back plate. Now on the front of the board where the actual chip is, um, those are two millimeter pads. So I, of course, used our two millimeter pads on that. And as you can see here, we were getting around 98 C on the memory junction. Uh, we are getting around 82 C now. It did uh, fluctuate up to 84, but then it went back down to 82. Um, and it's been running for long enough that I do feel um, that it will stay right around this temperature. So this kind of comes out to a 16 uh, degree uh, Celsius difference um, than what these stock pads uh, you know, produce. But you know, if it was 84 Celsius, which it did reach um, at some point, that would be a 14 uh, degree delta, which in my opinion on these cards uh, is great. Uh, we, we did a couple repads, um, about six of our Zotac, um, I believe they're called the Trinity Edition 3090s. We repadded those, and we only saw about an 8 to 10 uh, degree Celsius difference. And that kind of comes down to just the, um, you know, you're kind of limited to what the cooler can do. And the cooler on this Gigabyte is better than these Zotac, so that's why we are getting better results. So I just wanted to make this update video uh, for you guys, anyone kind of interested in repadding a um, Gigabyte 3090. So I regret not taking pictures of this, but um, there's this video um, here, and this is what the back of the plate looks like. There is this piece. Piece right here this is a three millimeter pad whereas the pads that are on the memory chips right here are all two millimeter now oddly
oddly enough, also my um, Gigabyte card did not come with any thermal pads on these sides right here. It only came with this one pad and, um, you know, pads covering all 12 of the memory chips back here. And so here we are on the front um, right here as well. I know I am using another person's video. I just didn't want to, you know, create a repetitive content for you guys. But the pads that go on the memory chips here are all two millimeter. And you can see here this weird um, adapter that they have. It almost looks like right when I took it off, I thought they were actually, you know, SATA cables, but they're not. Uh, but it does have that adapter for eight pin. I'm not sure why they have that. Um, kind of a weird design, but we don't currently have this card on our website. I will update our thermal pad list. Uh, we do have a list on the product page um, that brings you to another page that shows you the uh, thickness for the pads for your specific card. And although this pad right here is a three millimeter pad, uh, from the factory and then around the memory chips is two millimeter. I am going to go ahead and put three millimeter um, for the entire backplate. We are getting good results for that. And I do believe two millimeter was just a mistake um, on their behalf. I'm not sure why they did that. They should have definitely gone with 2.5 millimeter, but um, you know, having this three millimeter pad right here does push out um, a little bit more on the back plate, and I think it does lift off these chips, which you know would result in higher memory temperatures. So I will be putting a two millimeter thickness for the front of the board, and on the back of the board, I will be putting a three millimeter thickness. And I did start YouTube, so it um, did pull uh, from mining. So. We are down to 62 mega hash, uh, but this will bump up a little bit more. You can see here the power dropped to 186, but it is back at 318. And our memory junction temperature is going up as well. So there it is, 94 mega hash. Um, you guys know how it is with mining on your own personal computer. When you're doing other things, it uses uh, graphical processing power, which then results in less uh, processing power being dedicated to the mining program. So you do see these fluctuations. So that's going to be everything uh, for this video, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this content. Um, you know, I am going to be doing more repads on different cards, and I will be sharing all of the information with you guys via uh, these YouTube videos and also our website for thermal pad thickness. One thing we did notice, and we are again here in uh, South Florida, uh, we don't have much of a winter here, but summer is coming. And so I know um, there's a lot of people out there that aren't really having, you know, thermal throttling issues right now, but you do kind of want to get ahead of the game. You know, we probably have, I want to say about 20 to 30 more cards that we have to do this on. And we've already done about 20 to 30 cards. And it is kind of tedious and does take um, some time to do it. And the last thing you want to do is wait until it starts getting unbearably hot and all the cards are thermal throttling. And then at that point, you have just a mountain of work to do. But I know I procrastinate on a lot of stuff as well. I just wanted to share the results with you guys. Um, again, this 3090 does require about 15 to 20 more watts to achieve 120 mega hash as compared to about 105. And so when you pull more watts with these cards, of course, there will be more heat. And it makes these cards thermal throttle just that much easier. So I'm going to go ahead and take this 3090 off of the test bench, throw it back in the rig. I'm going to bump its power limit about 20 watts, and then I'll be on to the next one. But I just wanted to make this video for you guys, um, just a quick update on this specific card. And I hope everyone watching this has a great rest of their day, and we'll see you guys next time.